and we're back now as you can see I've got the dupes little jukebox up and running and by and large the base is coming together nicely for the expansion now um, some people were wondering why I didn't use different size bedrooms certain things like that well the plan is I've run the numbers and this base can easily support about 50 dupes but if I redline it I should be able to get it up to about 80 before I get into any of the really really crazy stuff so I'm trying to plan ahead here to support well, 70 to 80 duplicates, and maybe go up as high as 100 if it's possible. I, I'm not sure I'll actually get that far, but uh, I want to plan ahead and make sure everything's in place. So these these uh, dining halls can support 25 apiece, which means I'll max out at about four of those. Uh, the bedrooms, you see, the problem with bedrooms is you need to have them four tiles high if you want to put comfy beds in them. There's a four tile high requirement for comfy beds. Where is it? Uh, single comfy bed. Yes, yeah, second line from the bottom there, minimum height, four tiles, room effect. Though I think you can use sort of a double layered approach to do it. Still, I'd need twice as much space for the beds, which means I'd need twice as many bedrooms. As it is, I can support one, two, three, four. I can support about 50 dupes right now, which means I'm going to need another five bedrooms if I do get up to 90 to 100 dupes. That's a lot of space. Uh, I already had to demolish a plant over here to make room for the further expansion. And, uh, well, I'm going to need those plants later. As I get higher and higher in dupe count, food's going to become just as dangerous or just as important as oxygen. Now, um, no real major changes. I just threw down the two uh, dining halls finished off the art bombing and uh, I've put in this training area for the duplicates and currently I believe we're at three recruits uh, yeah we got three recruits let's see where are we ah yes new recruit one two and three all lined up in training at the moment or running on the wheels when they get a chance and when they're not dancing uh, but today is bathrooms now first up what we're going to need to do is this little area down here I'm going to turn this into my um, filtration area uh, so we're going to want to put in a liquid lock so visco gel yeah, now, there are so many different ways you can actually clean your polluted water. Well, your germy polluted water. There's several methods, but um, one thing some people would do, well, at least in the early game, was they'd run it through water sieves and then have the dirt dumped into these composts. The downside of using water sieves with germy polluted water is the germs gets into the water sieve and you're going to have germy clean water coming out, but the germs will die off in that clean water. And you can just dump that germy clean water back into your toilet systems anyway. But what I want to do is actually just clean the polluted water and then dump it all into this tank. This is already hooked into everything else. My oxygen production, uh, you know, anything that requires water, if if it's needed, it will get pulled out of here and filtered if we need excess water. As you can see, it's currently doing that right now. Oh, yeah, I want to cancel you. Yeah, we don't any more visco gel there. All right, so all I want to do is basically clean all the germs in my polluted water then I'll dump it in here and then any sieving or anything that happens after that I don't care as long as it's mixed in with this stuff it doesn't really matter what happens now um oh that's also one of the reasons these composts are back here um normally what happens if you sieve polluted water that has germs in it you're going to end up with germy polluted dirt and then that germy polluted dirt if your dupes touch it or handle it or move it somewhere uh, it will cover them in germs so that's why the composts are back here at the start so that your dupes can run past the sinks on the way out and they'll wash their hands course this is not perfect um for example if four dupes are using the toilet at the same time and they're all leaving then all four sinks will be occupied and one of them will manage to escape with germs on them so it's not perfect but at the start it doesn't really matter that much if the odd dupe gets uh, food poisoning it's not going to be the end of the world but i prefer to avoid all that now uh, avoid all that now in the late game so i'm just going to sieve everything and dump it in there now once that's all done down here we can just demolish pretty much everything actually we can demolish all of this yeah leave it on all uh, yeah all of you can go Ventilation pipes. Yeah, actually, we could deconstruct all of those. And let's hope I don't break this vacuum again. Okay, let's be serious. I probably will end up breaking this vacuum. I just can't help myself. Now, uh, for this, I am going to go with an ultra safe approach. You can get away with three liquid reservoirs when you're doing something like this, but I am going to use four. Why four? Because I am really, really paranoid. That's that's pretty much it. That's the only reason I'm going to use four. You can get away with three. I'll do a. I'll show a, a quick test map where I was testing this before. Uh, but I'll do that at the end. Now, I'm just going to fill all four of these tanks directly. Uh, what you want is basically all four of these tanks filled. Uh, there's other ways you can do it, but I'm going to just fill them up because it's easier at this stage of the game with the access to the resources I have to just prime the system instantly and then worry about all the rest later. So for the time being, all I'm doing is I've created a vacuum room and actually, where's our ventilation pipes? Uh, we're going to dump in some chlorine in here. I've hooked that chlorine up to this chlorine tank, which, if you've watched any of the early uh, videos from this series, very, 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 very long time ago, 
uh, there was an electrolyzer set up over here uh, that was feeding into the ice biome to get chilling. And I set up a little filtration system to filter out all the chlorine and dump it into a tank. And that tank has been sitting there for the whole game. It's been there for over, what, 12, 1300 cycles now? So now I'm eventually going to use that chlorine. Uh, you can see there's... Oh, I've, I ran a gas pipe up to it there a while back and now it's just uh, going to dump all its chlorine in here. Yeah. I've also got another bunch of chlorine tanks over the other side. But it would have been more difficult to actually get them in there. There's too much gas piping in the way. This uh, gas pump down here has still been active. Anytime it detects carbon dioxide or chlorine, this gas pump activates and it's been sucking up all the chlorine from down here and dumping it into these tanks slowly over the course of the last thousand or so cycles. It's actually been kind of efficient about doing it. It's kept this whole area nice and clean. Not necessary, but I just like it that way. Now, um, toilets. Okay. Now, I'm going to go with something slightly normal here. I know, crazy. Uh, first off, we're going to put in a sink. Uh, gold amalgam, thank you very much. And then I'm going to skip one and put down another sink. That's two, three, four, five. Now all I'm doing here is, this is a not uncommon strategy. Um, I'm going to put bathrooms after that. Bathrooms at one bathroom after each sink. So, put you there. Okay, the reason for this is... I mean, once a dupe comes in here, the only thing they're going to be coming in here for is for using the bathroom. So if they use that bathroom, they'll pass the sink on the way out and they're good to go. Same with the next dupe, dupe after that, dupe after that, dupe after that. It, it doesn't... It just means that if one dupe comes in here, they'll immediately go to this sink. If only three dupes come in here, they'll go this far. Whereas before, if three dupes come in here, all three of them would be over here and have to travel more distance. It's just cutting down slightly on travel distance. Though, maybe there'll be some other complications I hadn't anticipated at this later, but... I'm going to give this a shot. Now... Uh, doing some calculations of this, I think I'll max out somewhere around about two and a half kilos of polluted water coming out of all these toilets and sinks that I'm going to put in. That's roughly where I'm going to end up, assuming I get to the really high end. So, to combat that, I, I'm worried basically that I could end up blocking the pipes. As in, these exit pipes here, they might end up getting clogged. That would be bad. I don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to put a little storage tank at the back. Sort of a buffer system, just to make sure that the polluted water can escape. Okay... And I'm going to put one for each toilet section. And the reason I'm putting these little bends in the pipe here, just, instead of just putting them straight out, I want a little buffer beyond the sink. So these, just say, um, the toilet. The toilet will output 11.17 kilos of water. Or 11.7. 11.7 kilos of water. Uh, if there's stuff in the pipe so that it can't escape, I want to have a, just a little, a couple of pipe segments so that it can hold it for at least a little bit until it gets a chance to escape. This could happen with a lot of active toilets. So back here, I'm just going to stick in just a straight-up liquid tank. Uh, give me, yeah, liquid reservoir. And I'm just going to use this liquid reservoir to store store the stuff, just buffer it. It's only going to hold it temporarily just in case there's a backup in the system. Then I'm going to dump it down into a second tank down here for these guys. Uh, for the time being, though, I'm probably going to route it out to the side. Yeah, I'm going to write it down here somewhere. Just out of the way. And we're going to bring that down to where we're setting up our polluted water system. Now, uh, hmm. How am I going to do this? Come on. Yeah, yeah I'm just going to run it straight through here for now. I am not going to get fancy about this at all. Oh, cooling system. Yeah, I moved the entire cooling system. Uh, the cooling system now loops through the diamond floor tiles. I can't remember who mentioned this in the comments. It was a long, long time ago when I installed the first cooling system. Someone mentioned I should have run them through the floors because the diamond is such a good conductor. And I've taken your advice, uh, stranger that his name I can't remember. And yes, it works amazingly. It really does help drain the heat out of the whole area. This is becoming much thermally stable, sta thermally stable much faster than before. And the amount of heat it's sucking out of the area is unbelievable. It's just really quick. I think I was getting a four degree change in temperature between the water going out and the water coming back in. So it really was sucking the heat out incredibly quickly. Oh, wait, yeah, plumbing. I uh, should probably finish that off before I start yakking away again. Um, uh, what was this? This was... Oh, yeah, this was me messing up. So, yeah, I was going to run that like that. And then... This would go up here. So you can start actually getting water into these things. Actually, I don't want to put in the water just yet. I want to make sure I've got everything else hooked up before I connect the water to those systems. And I'm going to want to demolish some of the piping here, just to give myself more room to play with. I want to run the polluted water down the middle, sort of like uh, like I normally do my systems. Actually, I'm not going to have much room to play around with down there. 
Uh, yeah, you'll have to go there. And that will allow me to demolish that center pipe. Yeah, now I should be able to hop through all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, over here, how am I going to manage this? Okay, we're going to have another hop over here. Yeah, that should work. Uh, demolish this pipe. Damn, the moment you start trying to redo the plumbing in your main base, it starts getting really complicated really quickly. Because all of this stuff was put in a long time ago, and you've forgotten. Eh, <laughs> eh, uh, uh, get rid of all of that. God, it's so nice when you have a bunch of plumbers on hand. Eh, uh, uh, deconstruct that pipe as well. We're going to have a little bit of spilt water. I'm not going to care too much about a little spilt water right now. Okay, so this is where all the polluted water will come out. Damn it, where'd my plumbing go? Yeah, you can go straight down here, we'll hop across. Uh, yeah, that clean water below us, that's the actual output going down to... Uh, ooh, actually, how am I going to get us out of here? I'll probably go to the right. Actually, go to the right now? Yeah, go... Mm, actually, no. I don't want to go to the right just now. Uh, I'll go through here. If I go to the right, it's going to complicate some of future plans I have as well, so I'd rather just hop over everything here. God, this plumbing is going to be a mess. I'll have to redo this at some point off-screen and make it neater. Uh, who am I kidding? I won't bother. I'd, I'd like to go around off-screen and, and clean it all up, but uh, I'll probably get distracted by some other project. And that can go... Yeah, something like this. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah. Nice. Okay, that should get us all the polluted water down there. Now, why is that not filling up with water? I left that specifically to fill up with water, so this would be almost good to go by now. What happened? Oh, yeah, I never hooked up the power to this, did I? Yeah, I left this off so I wouldn't be clogging anywhere with water, and, yeah, I had already the power cable in place. Okay, so it'll start filling those tanks. Now, uh, what else was there left to do? Oh, yes. Now that means... Well, now I have a buffer tank and I have the piping and plumbing in place, I can actually start filling in this in. And why is that not... Oh yeah, there's no plumbing at the end of that. Uh, we'll put in a pipe segment there. Oh, okay, that's sloppy. I should have put in a bridge. Yeah, that's going to spread water. Actually, no, I don't need to worry too much. The actual throughput on this isn't going to be that huge. Two and a half kilos means even that little annoying pipe segment there. Uh, okay, I'll fix it now. I'll fix it now. Otherwise, it'll bug me. Uh, let me see. How can I do this? Actually, wait, I'm ripping out these entire toilet systems. I don't have to care. Yeah, never mind. I'm going to be ripping out the toilet system, at which point this won't matter at all. Okay, now to see if this system works. We're going to make this uh, exit only. No one's allowed in there anymore. What the... Oh, buggery. My dupes have had double access for a while. Has anyone gotten sick? No, no, I think I think we're good. Uh, hmm. Damn it, so why won't they use these toilets yet? Oh no, someone is. You know what, I'm just going to rip them up. Oh, actually, no, I'm not going to rip them up. Uh, only exit. Actually, no entrance, no exit. You can go at the front. Okay, so this top toilet seems to be working. Excellent, that you go down to the filtration area, which I swear we will cover <laughs> once I have enough polluted water in there. How are we looking already? Uh, so the first tank's almost full. Once we have the first three tanks full, we should be good to go. I can actually start hooking up the plumbing, but I'd prefer to get it completely filled so you can see the whole thing in action when it's complete. Now, uh, for plumbing down here, we're going to need a little bridge overflow system. This is going to be using one of the most commonly used automations of myself, which is uh, basically using overflow. Uh, okay, so let's pause this for a second. Polluted water will come in here. It will try and enter this. Uh, if it can't because it's full, then it will overflow here. Hit this sensor, and then the sensor will feed data as to whether or not it should activate. Yeah, pretty much standard issue, and then that will then try and feed back in there, but it can't feed back in until... Yeah, okay. This little 
section here is what I normally use for overflow mechanics. We have used it multiple, multiple times. Uh, just it's ubiquitous for just managing flow. Like uh, here's a similar one over here that's used for gas. If the gas overflows, you see we've got an actual sensor right there, gas pipe element sensor. So if we have too much natural gas in the pipes, this activates the natural gas generators to burn it off. This means we always have three tanks of gas. This is literally the exact same system as we are going to be using right here. Um, another one is, um, where was it? Oh, when we had the old hydrogen generator set up, same thing, used the same sort of thing to burn off the excess hydrogen. Um, polluted, uh, even pretty much everything in some way, shape or form that involves gas tanks or liquid tanks, you're usually going to put up one, have it either over, have an overflow system in place or something along the lines. This little dual liquid bridge with a sensor in the middle is usually what you're going to use. Now, uh, liquids. Uh, liquid pipe thermal sensor. No, liquid pipe element sensor. Excellent. And then on the other side, I'm going to have a liquid shut off to stop this. What we're basically going to do is have all the polluted water come in here. All four of these tanks are going to be kept full constantly. And then once the water starts backing up in the system, what it'll do is it'll turn on a valve here to let some of the water out. And the water will have been in there long enough to actually have decontaminated all these germs. Well, that's not quite actually accurate we'll cover the more specific mechanics when that happens but uh yeah basically no germ water will escape in fact we could get away with three tanks but like i said i am super paranoid now well that's ongoing i'm going to try and start saving on power uh the reason being i have to install more oxygen generation <laughs> um i've got enough to keep these dupes going i mean I i'm pulling in about three kilos and i'm only hiring duplicates that have oh which reminds me i'm only hiring duplicates that have divers lung and uh, no divers lung bye bye that way I can stretch my oxygen supplies even further, which is going to put even more stress on my food supply. And yeah, three dupes at least can use this. Someone was saying it's up to five and two dupes can use the arcade machine. So if two dupes can use the arcade machine, it makes it a little bit more powerful. But I really want to know how many this can max out at. We'll find out. I'm going to be running, uh, well, theoretically at endgame, it will be eight sets of ten dupes, eight shifts of ten dupes. So we'll see how many that happens. Also, i got to think about my oxygen, pro uh, oxygen provisioning for here. Uh, if I say I have 10 dupes in here and they're breathing, they're going to be consuming about a kilo of oxygen a second. I'm not sure I can provide that much pressure. I mean, I'm going to have 20, 30 dupes in space at a time, maybe, or possibly more. I may actually have to switch to just high-pressure gas vents just so I can get enough gas pressure in there to keep everyone oxygenated. I'm going to worry about that later, but that's one of those things that, that's on my mind right now. Now, um, how are dupes doing for bathrooms? I think the bathrooms are fine. Yeah, so those new ones are working out just perfect. Nice. All right. Uh, in that case, we are going to deconstruct these. Uh, actually, what's the plumbing looking like in here? You know what? Let's deconstruct the plumbing first. Uh, hmm. Damn it. Actually, deconstruct it there. Uh, deconstruct that there. Put in another liquid bridge. And I should probably do a mop-up. I haven't done a mop-up in a while. And I just remembered I dumped a whole bunch of water everywhere. Uh, okay, any other water make it anywhere? Oh yeah, they can't get into the bathrooms just yet. They can get into the bathrooms once that bridge is finished. Come on. Okay, good. Nothing nothing horrible happened. Uh, yeah, we will deconstruct... Well, all of you, including the door. Yeah, once the door's gone, they have no problem getting into the room. Okay, no one's allowed to use those bathrooms. Come on. Just make sure they're all deconstructed before someone tries to use them. Nice. Uh, how's the plumbing looking? Yeah, we can deconstruct all of that. That's just going to get in the way. Ooh, and we can rip out all of this. Wow, I put this in a long time ago. Uh, all those reed fibers can go. Uh, then we're going to want to deconstruct, well, pretty much everything in here. This uh, is all going to go. Uh, yeah, all those blocks, everything, in effect, all of that can go. Please tell me there's no slime lung in there. Well, it's polluted oxygen, but no slime lung, that's fine. Uh, actually, yeah, that should be fine up to there. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, wait, no, no, get rid of those two. Okay, now, Ooh. what are you made of? Are you made out of copper? No, nope, no, nope. I want you to be made out of gold. I don't want to waste all my copper just yet. So I am managing to recycle quite a bit of copper here. Hey, same thing again, basically. Uh, 
actually no 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 i need to change the plumbing i'm going to actually run the cooling loops through the bottom of these bathrooms i'm, I'm actually going to integrate cooling into these bathrooms for a change and not be lazy about these things if we're going this size we've got to be absolutely ridiculously careful about everything because i have no idea when i'm going to hit that point where i may accidentally collapse the whole base and i'd rather not do that uh, damn i do have a lot of plumbers that makes life so much simpler i'm almost tempted to get more but i think this is more than enough for the uh for the tasks at hand come on you're almost done seriously okay fine i'll take the stuff either side of you all right and then a simple repeat jobby and there we go 10 bathrooms that means i can run 10 dupes per shift nice okay and i've messed this up again haven't i yes i have totally messed this up again hmm uh, I should probably run... Actually, you know what? I don't care. I'm going to do that like that. And then I'm going to panic and realize that I haven't actually hooked up the exit pipe, so putting water into this right now would be a bad idea. Yep. Yeah, we'll leave that to there. That way we can hook that up when the time comes. Perfect. Now we just got to integrate this into this system over here, and we should be good to go. Last pipe. Uh, what was it doing? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now all well, I need to... Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the... How much polluted water did they generate? I guess that goes down there. Ah, dupes can't hit that. Why do I have a five tile high ah, the battery box. That's why I have a five tile high room. Okay, I was wondering why I'd gone uh I might have thought I've gone insane at some point. Anyway, deconstruct that. Uh, how are we looking? That one's almost full. Thankfully. Okay. Once once we start putting liquid into this one. Actually no, i am gonna not gonna ha do this half measure, so I'm gonna fill that whole thing up and then we're going to uh finish that. So in the meantime, uh, we are going to start filling these two tanks. So plumbing wise. Uh, I suppose the simplest thing to do would just be run it directly into this tank. Uh, but I want it to feed on with a priority. Yeah. What I'm trying to say here is I don't. I want this tank to basically act as a buffer, but I don't want it to try and force its way into this tank. Okay, that. If I do it that way. Yeah. All right. So once I delete this piping, this mad section of piping over here. Uh, uh, how am I going to do that? Actually, no. Cancel that. I'm going to have liquid pipes doing cooling through the base, so I can't run anything through the diamond. I need to actually have bridges over the diamond. Which means I'm also going to need a bridge over this. Uh, cancel you. Yeah. Perfect. That is... God, that's horrifically messy. You know what? Since we're here and we're doing a proper, proper, proper base, let's not uh, mess about. Let's do this smarter. Yes, that would be so much ridiculously simpler to do it that way. I only need one bridge. I hop over there. Yep, that's that's actually smart. That way I can seal off this area anyway. Yeah, that works. Okay, and then that can feed down into here. Right, once that's done, I can delete the rest of the random piping over here. Eh. Okay, not your average bathrooms, but I think they'll work. Uh, where was I? Uh, you all set to open. Unless I've even set all the doors to open already. Except for that one. That one's because uh, that's the training room. But everything else, I've been going around making sure all the doors are open. I, I know I'm terrible about forgetting about those things. Now, once we get this all hooked up, uh, that'll give us an enormous amount more water to draw from. Well, not an enormous, but quite a decent sized chunk of water to work with. Now, uh, is that done? That done? Yeah. Okay, Dis deconstruct that. I don't actually do a big deconstruct command here until, yeah, I've broken that link. I don't want any of that water going the wrong direction. Actually, and I want to deconstruct these as well. Oop, you can go. Perfect. 
perfect. So now we have our polluted water running out down here, heading down towards our soon to be completed decontamination room. How are we looking? Almost full. Perfect. Now, I've pressurized this place with more than the required amount of uh, chlorine because I am probably going to have to break pipes here. I don't want to, but I'm probably going to have to, and I don't want any polluted water venting. Actually, I can probably just break it here and then plumb out the pipes. That might actually be a smarter idea. Uh, I'll just skip forward until this is all done, and then when we come back in, we'll actually activate the system. Okay, so we've got all the tanks full. Uh, first thing to do... Wait, no, not thimble reed. I want to deconstruct those pipes. I'll deconstruct that pipe there. Uh, that way I can plumb out the rest of them without actually causing a horrific mess. Um, actually, yeah, that should be fine. Now, give me some plumbing. Okay, then I can demolish all those pipes. Uh, how am I going to have this work in here? Okay, so that's the water that's going to be coming in. Come on. Let's hope they don't put out any polluted oxygen. They better not. If they put out polluted oxygen, I will go mental. Nope, that's fine. And you know what? Let's clean out that room right now before that becomes a problem. Actually, nope, we're going to level 5 sweeps. I can't remember the last time I used one of those, but we're using it now. Sweep that chunk, chunk up. Once that's swept up, and... Oh, we'll actually have to deconstruct these pipes as well, won't we? Maybe we should have to sweep command until after I deconstruct those pipes. Nope, actually, nope, that's fine. Yeah, so once that's all deconstructed, we can start putting this in. I'll just cut this out here. There's... I shouldn't be wasting your time this way. One moment. Okay, we're good to go. We've got everything set up. Well, we've got this set up. We do have to do a little bit of plumbing. Now, uh, this will be the entrance here. Uh, how is this going to work? Do it that way? Yeah, that'll do fine. That into there, that into there. Now, how is this going to work? We're going to have a liquid shutoff right about here. And then we're going to run that into this. And down here we're going to actually... Yeah, we're going to deconstruct that liquid pump. And we're going to have to... Where is this vent going to come out? Vent is going to come out here. So we'll deconstruct that mesh tile. And maybe find the last of this plumbing. Where are you? Uh, yeah, we'll deconstruct all of this. So basically all the polluted water that's coming out of here is going to be dumped into a, a liquid vent down there. Now, automation-wise, I mean automation wire. Let's make sure we're not using steel. That would be a waste. And this... Well, once it finished saving, this is going to connect up to the shutoff. All right, so all that's going to happen is this polluted water is going to feed in here and try and get into this tank. If this tank is full, this tank is full, this tank is full, if all four tanks are full, uh, the, the polluted water won't be able to get in here. So what it'll do instead is it'll overflow at this and trip the sensor. And the sensor will activate this shutoff to say, yeah, all four tanks are full, you can turn on. At which point it will turn on and start letting the polluted water out. Uh, polluted water will have no germs in it, we'll see why in a bit. But um, yeah, and then once all the liquid has gone out of the system, or once there's no more incoming liquid, it will say, okay, well, I'm no longer overflowing, so you can stop. And that will be the end of that. Uh, how are we looking here? We got, yeah, a little bit shy, but I can live with that. Okay, automation wire still has to go in, though. Does it? Oh, power. That was it. Now, where am I getting my power from? I got a power wire nearby. There we are. Come here, you. Oh, no, that is... There we go. Now, that just leaves the last of this hooking up. Now, I should probably do this at slow speed. Well, once that's hooked up, I'll hook up the... This. Actually, I can hook that up now, I think. Yeah, might as well. Doesn't really matter if the automation isn't in place just yet. That'll just mean the water won't be able to move. Uh, so, I don't want to hook it into that. That would be bad. I want to hook it into this one. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to be making this a little bit larger than I expected. Uh, fine. I could have made this more compact, but I'm not too worried at the moment about space. Yeah, so that will go there and plug into that. Now, assuming I've done this correctly, I'm pretty sure I have. Pretty sure. Reasonably sure. Almost reasonably sure. Uh, once that's finished, the water should go in there and it will fill this up with 150 kilos, at which point it'll start overflowing and backing up. Uh, eh. I'll just fast forward this until it's ready to go. Actually, never mind, it's ready to go. Uh, 
Let's make this a little bit slower so we can see what happens. Actually, not not that slow. Okay, okay, yes, yes, good, good, good. As you can see, there's lots of germs in there. Okay, it's full. So now that it's full, this has got up to five tons. You'll see the polluted water is now going out this way. And it's about to go over and trip that sensor. When it trips that sensor, it's going to activate this. Oh, wait. Uh, plumbing. Liquid vent. So. But we'll turn on the automation. Once that hits there. Ah. Yeah, I should probably set this to polluted water. Yep, yeah, now it activates that. And it's going to start trying to pump the water out. Uh, one minute, how are we looking for germs? Yeah, everything here is still germ-free for now, but not for long. Come on, someone put in that vent for me. Oh, yeah, I've got it on slow speed. That's why it's taking so long. Okay, one moment. Okay, moment is up. Now, we should have enough backed up water here. Why is that not pumping? Oh. <laughs> Never mind, a quick fast forward later. Okay, here we go. Now, I'll slow this down a bit so you can see it all in action. These things are pretty straightforward. So you can see there's a bunch of polluted water in here that's trying to get in. And it's driving up the germs in the reservoir. However, those germs are dying pretty quickly because those germs are in chlorine. Surrounded by chlorine, 100% dead cycle. It doesn't matter how much chlorine is in here. You could have 10 grams or 20 kilos of pressure. It makes no difference. It kills it at the same speed. Also, it's not consumed in the process. Uh, a little bit more on that, but um, yeah, basically this will just run forever. Now you see this one's got lots and lots of germs in it. This one here has 1,200 something germs in it. This one here has no germs in it. And this one here definitely, definitely has no germs in it. You could stop at three tanks. Oh, wait, no. Some of them got in. Yeah, thank God I put in that fourth tank. Oh, actually, wait, no, to make a difference. Um, okay, so all that's happening here is this. The germy polluted water comes in here, and then due to the way the mechanics of the game work, it gets divided. Or not divided so much, it's diluted. So suddenly you have 10 kilos of water merging with 5 tons of water. So all the germs get diluted amongst all of the actual uh, rest of the liquid. So when the liquid goes to move to the second tank, you only get something like mm, 1 500th. Yes, 1 500th. Of, uh, of the um, the germs moving on to the next tank. And then the same thing happens again, and only 1 500th of the germs gets moved on to the next tank. And then, well, this is less than 500 germs, which means it's less than one germ per kilo going out, so no germs make it into the next section. This is why you can get away with three tanks. This has been tested extensively by lots of people. There's loads of different designs. Now, um, just one thing, the reason I pre-filled this system with, with germ-free polluted water is basically these pipe segments here. What'll happen is if you just try and run germy polluted water in this directly from the toilets and wait until that fills up all these tanks, well, what'll happen is these pipes in here will be full of germy water because the first flood of water down here will just be full of germs. None of them will die going through the tanks and you'll just end up with these three pipe segments here will have full germ water in them and the liquid in the pipes is not affected by the chlorine. It doesn't kill the germs. There's no... There's no mechanics for testing that out. So basically that stuff just sits in the pipes and then when the system eventually activates, the first thing you'll dump out is a bunch of germy polluted water from the first three pipe segments. Also, these pipe segments will be full of super germy water as well, which means they'll dump that in there. It won't be diluted enough and you'll end up spitting out more germs. So you really want to, if you want to use something this simplistic, pre-fill it if at all possible. And you'll notice there, it's actually shut off. We've cleaned out the whole system. And this has 4,929 kilos in it. So what happened there was we ran out of incoming water, and then this bubble of polluted water that was here was actually I managed to escape in here. Uh, this has priority, so the liquid coming down from here and going across this way has priority to flow. So while there's any liquid coming this way, the water that's in here tripping the sensor can't escape. But once we've stopped putting the water into it, the water can escape, or the polluted water can escape, in which case the sensor goes, hey, no more water here, turn off. And that way we constantly keep all four of these tanks completely full. Well... Close enough to completely full that it, it suits our needs, and we don't end up with any germs escaping. Now, uh, chlorine, that doesn't actually get deleted. There's a, You might think it does. I originally thought chlorine got deleted in this process. It doesn't. Uh, the reason you might think that is if you view things like, oh, 
uh, a, a water sieve. Uh, if you've used water sieves and you've thrown polluted wa water into them and polluted dirt, they off-gas no matter what you do. You can't actually prevent it. It doesn't matter how high the pressure is around them, they will eventually off-gas. The same with um, those algae, dis al algae distilleries. Algae distilleries also do the exact same thing. If you fill the around them in chlorine, uh, eventually half of it will get overwritten. It's one of those gas overwrite mechanics. There's nothing you can do about it. But it's not the chlorine being consumed by killing the germs. It's actually the um, the gas overwrite mechanic at play. So this is basically effectively will delete all my polluted water needs or delete all my germy polluted water needs for as long as needs be. And it will run at a full 10 kilos per second if needs be. Shouldn't ever come to that, but if you're running showers, you'll definitely need at least one of them. If you're running multiple showers and going up to this set of population, you're insane. <laughs> yeah, there's no way you can go that high. Okay, uh, what was my next plan? Yeah, that was it. I need to actually start saving on energy. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to install another set of electrolyzers soon because I'm at 21 dupes. Uh, so as I start adding ooh, more and more dupes, which... Diver's lung. Narcoleptic, don't care. The only thing I care about is I don't want flatulent because that will just complicate my base way, way, way too much. Uh, I don't want uh, bottomless stomach because that will also increase my food requirements, which are going to become more and more scary. Um, recruit number three, right, four. Um, what was the last thing? There was a uh, yeah, loud sleepers, actually. I realize my bedrooms are so tiny that uh, loud sleepers would actually be a problem. Now, where is new recruit number four? You're going to crank up your operate by one, and we will just make that will make sure you go in there. Uh, the doors down here are automatically sealed to new duplicants, so they got to be allowed specific permissions. And these doors up here will allow them in. So yeah, off you go onto the jobs. Jobs training. Jobs training is running on a hamster wheel. And uh, new recruit number four, we will put you in research just so you can improve your learning skill. By the time these dupes are all finished on the wheel, they will have maxed running and max tinkering. The running is all I really care about because right now they are so ridiculously slow. Oh, scheduling. Um, yeah, I've increased the number of schedules to eight. Yeah, that's probably that should get me up to 80 dupes if needs be. So we'll put you, where's number four? I passed them already, haven't I? New recruit one, two, three, new recruit four. Uh, excellent. Now, uh, yes, power saving. The reason I want to do power saving is, where is my... Yeah, this is fluctuating a fair bit depending on time of day, and I'd like to actually save a little bit of power. Uh, probably one of my biggest power sinks, outside of my rocket systems, which I could decommission, but no, no, just no. Uh, I like having my rockets running. They're also still bringing me in some valuable resources that eventually I won't be able to gain access to anymore because I won't have the resources to obtain them. Uh, so what I'm going to do instead is we're going to do a quick retrofit. I'll just retrofit this one and then the rest I'll leave. Um, all I'm going to do is drain all the polluted water out of the system and then I'm going to replace it all with super coolant. Um, that should give me a massive bonus. Well, not a massive bonus, it should decrease the power requirements by quite a bit. Uh, so two loads of super coolant should do it. I think I did some... Yeah, I tried to count up the water bubbles in here. I think there's more than 20, but if there's more than 20, I'm going to need more than 200 kilos of super coolant. But I've got plenty of super coolant, so not a big deal. So what I'm going to do is just going to put this here. That should hopefully drain... That will provide priority flow and should drain it all off into the system. And I hooked it up to the wrong... Yeah, okay. Shh, shh. That never happened. You didn't see that. Nope, nope. You think that someone who played the game for as many hours as I have would not still not make stupid mistakes like that. Um, okay, power. Oh. Actually, yeah, we're gonna need two of those, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, plumbing. Two there should be fine, and we're also gonna need some power for you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this thing's still good. Yeah, this is still good. Let me double check though. Yep, yeah, definitely still good. Alright, uh, so once we get that second load of super coolant in there, I can shut that off. And how's our loop looking? Ah, oh, there's still polluted water in there. I didn't think this through very well, did I? I should have put it over here. Wait, would that have made a difference? Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Actually... Does that work? Nope, still off. Below. Above, below. Okay, fine. Fine, be that way. Uh, I didn't turn that off yet, did I? Nope. Now I have. Okay. Hmm. Let me have a quick think about this for a second. Okay, I have 
the beginnings of a plan, maybe? Uh, liquid filter. Yeah, it's pretty much as complicated as this plan gets. Uh, I'm going to have to run a bunch of stuff through here, and eventually I'll probably get it. Um, oh yeah. So the plan will be, that will go in there. Polluted water will get filtered out and sent in here. Uh, the super coolant then will end up going ooh, back down and in there. Mm, you know what? I should include a bridge. Yeah, I should definitely include a bridge. Uh, actually, include the bridge this side. Yeah. So, the plan will be... Yeah, I'm going to filter out the polluted water and eventually I'll only have super coolant running through here. Not exactly the smartest plan the way I did it, but this should hopefully fix my mess up. Hopefully. Oh, and I better make sure to set that to polluted water only. Um, also, can dupes not get across there? Why are they going around? Oh, I forgot, yeah. I basically sealed up all these areas and removed all the handy access ladders just to uh, cut down on pathing options. Uh, you can be... And I made that out of steel, didn't I? Well, that was silly. Ah, uh, who cares? Alright, done, done, done. No, not quite done. Plumbing. Alright, we'll put you in there. Hey, come on, finish that off. Ah, right, so it gets rid of all the polluted water. Actually, I probably could have just ripped out that whole liquid tank. It's not necessary now. You know what? Never mind. So long as I get this up and running, I don't care. Now, um, one of the things to realize about polluted water, if I can grab a chunk of it, wherever it is, uh, say there's polluted water here, it has a specific heat capacity of 4.17. Super coolant, on the other hand. Let's grab some of that before it disappears. 8.4. So it has twice the specific heat capacity, meaning if you chill this by 14 degrees, which a term, uh, an aqua tuner will do that, you're getting twice as much potential cooling out of it. So this will half the electricity costs of running this for cooling the main water from my base. Uh, how's this looking? <laughs> okay. Um, Connect the wire reading pipe. Come on, give me the temperature sensor. Uh, there we go. There we go. Okay, come on. Yep, yep, that works. Oh yeah, so we've got all of that out of the way. That means we can deconstruct this, probably? If I deconstruct that, the whole system should just start running as normal. What's this? If the temperature is above minus one. Yeah, that's what we wanted. So if the temperature is above minus one... No, we'll keep... Yeah, I should have put in a bridge here. Uh, that should give some flow. And uh, now we've switched entirely to coolant. Uh, that will definitely cut down on power costs. This is one of my more active uh, cooling devices. I should also do the same. I'm also going to do something similar with the remaining steam... Uh, where is it? Cool steam vent ones. I've got a cool steam vent one over here. Does pretty much the same thing. I'm just going to rip out the the radiant. Well, I'm going to rip the liquid out of this and replace it with super coolant, which will have the energy costs for that. That way, I can have the energy costs on the cooling for the cool steam vents and this cooling loop here. Uh, as for this other cooling loop over here, this one is using polluted water and quite a lot of it. I don't think I'm going to bother. I'm going to be ripping all of this out at some point because I'm going to have to switch to a sour gas boiler because I need to squeeze the maximum amount of water out of my oil. So this is all going to be have to be removed anyway. So, yeah, I'm not going to worry too much about that. I just want enough... Uh, I want to save enough power from these to actually run an extra few electrolyzer setups. Now, how are we looking? Yeah, you're all good. We can rip that out. And then once that's out, I can actually remove you. Can we mop that? Yes, we can mop that. Perfect. And put another one there. This just helps me recycle all the super coolant, okay? <laughs> that stuff's expensive. It costs something like it's 60% gold or something crazy like that. So yeah, I'm I'm going to go out of my way to actually make sure all that stuff gets uh, gets used up. But anyway, I'll just uh, cut this bit out. You you know what I'm going to do anyway. And there we go. We've actually doubled the power efficiency of our 
cooling loop for our base. And now I have to kind of just, uh, if you'll notice here in the temperature overlay, this place is going to be a little bit warm. Namely because, well, there's a lot of liquids going in there. Shouldn't really be that warm because we are pumping in pretty chilly water. Uh, how are we looking? Yeah, everything's fine. I haven't hooked up the second set of toilets yet, though. Yeah. Then what I want to do is, well, lock the back doors. Don't want anyone going in that way. Uh, because I haven't actually sealed this off at the back yet. And yeah, just I'm going to rip this out and turn it all into diamond floors and pretty much make it the same as, well, everything else. Uh, deconstruct buildings. Yeah, you can all go. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to seal this off at the back and have a nice little square base. But yeah, that's 10 toilets. That should support 10 duplicates per shift. There's 24 shift, well, there's 24 chunks in a schedule. So if you notice up here, I've got 24 chunks to work with. So if I put them, offset them by three, I can fit in eight schedules. And eight schedules at 10 dupes, that's, well, 80 dupes, which is pretty, ga pretty good, to be honest. I, I think I can work that. Now, uh, Iron Gut, Grease Monkey, Early Bird, Caregiver, no thank you. Actually, Joya Seeds, they're always handy. I could probably actually put in some plants in here in these instead. You know what? Just make a difference. But uh, one last thing I'm going to do, and then I'll just go through, well, some of the things I've been thinking about offline that I'm going to have to implement at some point. Uh, this will be a cooling loop. Uh, should we go all the way? Actually, you know what? Why not? So that will just... I'm going to hook that into this cooling grid. And uh, then it will come... Ooh, yeah, that will go out to there. One moment, actually. That's going to be bridged on, bridged off. And this will be... Hmm, actually, I'm going to have to get rid of that hop over there. Yeah, then that will come straight down here, feed into this direction, go all the way past here. I'm going to, yes, I am going to remove that liquid pump, and it will have to actually go through the floor here. Reason being, I can't actually move that floor. It's, it supports the gateway. Hmm. Well, I could do some things, but I'm not going to. And actually, we'll cancel that last one as well. But yeah, these will be my cooling loops for these areas. I just want to keep the whole base thermally stable, just because I don't ever want to worry about that ever again. And this way, it should be just fine. Uh, nope. Ah, yes, I've locked those doors. That's why no one can do that. Okay, you know what? You can go in and out. We'll finish the renovations, and at that point, it will be a one-way street anyway, so there's nothing you can do. Uh, oh, also delete you. Yeah. Now, I'll just fast-forward this a bit until uh, I'm ready to finish this up and tidy up the bathroom section. Okay, all finished. I just tidied all of this up and uh, finished off the flooring. All looking quite good, and I've got the uh, cooling loops built, but I haven't actually hooked them up. Now, I think I should be able to hook these up with minimal pain, but yeah, that that never works for me, does it? Okay, yeah, so that will go that way, and it will go that way. Which means I'm going to have to delete, where is it? I'm going to have to delete that liquid bridge. Not that one, that one. Uh, that's an input, so... And liquid pipe? Yeah, fine. And that means I can actually deconstruct these. Oh, actually, I'm going to have to deconstruct a bunch of these. Alright, so that goes in there, gets all confused. Those three can be deleted. Yeah, okay, so that comes out, comes down here, goes around, comes all the way back out, which means these four can be deleted. Yep, I'm going to drop a bunch of water, I don't care, just so long as I get this cooling loop finished. Nice. Okay, so that should help start cooling down that area. If you look at the temperature here, it's pretty toasty. I mean, it's not dangerous or anything, but I like to keep everything nice and cool. And if you'll notice, the cooling loop here is literally even the temperature out everywhere. Even these space artifacts that started off insanely hot are now actually cooling down quite nicely. Just a handy way to keep your entire base chill, all powered by a super coolant heat deletion device. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> To think, there was almost no plumbing here when we started. Now it looks like a complete mess. Yep, that's exactly the way it should be, I suppose. Uh, oh, actually, I can delete some of this old piping. That is vestigial and no longer needed. Uh, yeah, we can also get rid of that. One final mop, and I think, uh, yeah, I think the last thing I'll do in this episode is just go over, well, why I'm doing what I'm doing, and sort of some of the some of the basic numbers I figured out so that I can actually get this running, or why I'm planning. Why I'm planning the base the way I'm planning is because of just some work I did in the background actually working out numbers and just how much how much everything works out to. So uh, yeah, I think next up we'll just go over the a quick look over the numbers and we'll cut it out after that. 
Okay, so here's some of the numbers I've been crunching in the background. Um, this was basically just to figure out how many dupes I could support, and it's why my base kind of looks a little bit ridiculous and designed in an odd way. Um, just ignore most of this for the moment. All that really matters right here is this is the total dupes. This is the total number of dupes I should be able to support if all the dupes I hire from now on have divers lung. If they all have divers lung, and I just keep going the way I'm going with the way everything is currently configured, I'll be able to support 55 of them. At that point, though, I'll max out. That's assuming I keep all the rockets running. Uh, so just to go through this, this is uh, I have 21 regular dupes. Uh, of my first 24 dupes that I hired, three of them had divers lung already. Uh, the last four I've hired all have divers lung as well. And this is their oxygen consumption. This is how much water they're consuming. And this is how much oxygen my rocketry system is consuming. Well, not really. It's not really consuming that much. But that's what I put it down as just because I, I rounded up just to give myself a, a little bit of a safety margin. And that's all the water they're consuming each one of those. And uh, it's how many dupes I actually have. Now, um, down here is how much water all my geysers and vents are producing. I have one polluted water vent. I have two cool steam vents. So I'm getting 5.6 kilos of water from that. This is my petroleum water. Uh, this is, um, oh, okay. I'm running a petroleum boiler. I have to put in two kilos of water to get the crude oil. But at the end of the day, I get 2.456 kilos of water back. So that's that. what that number comes from. And this is toilet water. It basically takes the number of dupes I have, and each dupe produces about, I think it's 6.7 uh, 6 kilos of water for each dupe. That's how much extra I'll get out of the toilets. Now, I could double that by getting the dupes to use the toilets twice a day by changing their schedules around and doing some stuff. But I, I don't really want to do that. I consider that just... Uh, it, it's something I'm not comfortable doing. I would prefer to just have leave it as standard and uh, get that amount of water out of it. But I could double it if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. I mean, at this point, I'm getting divers lung only dupes, which is kind of stretching what is normal. Uh, I should really just be taking on regular dupes. But no, no, we're, we're trying to aim for the maximum amount of dupes. So this is how much total water I have available to work with when you take into account map water, toilet water, and petroleum water. Uh, this is how much water I'm consuming and how many more dupes with divers lung I could hire. So I could hire another 27 on top, well, 27.3, but you can't hire a 0.3. So this is how many dupes I could potentially max out at as it currently is. However, there's things I can do to stretch this. Uh, if I go on the natural gas boiling route, what I could do is just, uh, well, I, I get that much actual water out as well. Minus two kilos, so 1.257. So say uh, 1257, which would bring me up to a total of 64 dupes if I do it that way. However, to be even nicer, if I ran a bunch of slicksters to actually consume all the CO2 produced by it, uh, recycle all of that, turn that back into petroleum, boil that, blah, 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 go along the way, eventually I could get about, assuming I recycle all the carbon dioxide they produce, I could get up to that much additional water from boiling it all, which would actually get me up to 68 dupes, which is looking a lot better. Now, assuming I got rid of my entire rocketry program, that would bring me up to 81 dupes total. And that's before we start getting into the more exotic ways of acquiring water. Now, um, there is a few ways of acquiring water. One is you can use a matter duplication bug to duplicate water, but I'm not going to use that for obvious reasons. My second favorite idea, which I think is amazing, but I'm not going to do it because it just gets absolutely ridiculous, is you farm glossy dracos. Now, I know you're thinking, why would you farm glossy dracos? Well, if you farm glossy dracos, they will produce plastic. If you take that plastic and you melt it, that plastic will become naphtha. And if you take that naphtha and you heat it up to 540 degrees, it's the same as petroleum. You heat it up to the same temperature as petroleum boiling for natural gas boiling, and it will turn into sour gas. And then you can chill the sour gas down and turn it into methane and then heat it up again to turn it into natural gas. Now, assuming these numbers are very uh, rough, but assuming you have 100% uptime on your glossy dracos, as in they're always in hydrogen, and you get 50 kilos per shearing, which is the standard, you can get, after you've melted it, boiled it, turned it into natural gas and burned it off, you'll get about 12.3 grams a second of oxygen out of it. Or is that water or oxygen? Well, I presume that's oxygen. This is a while since I did the math on this. So that would mean if you farm 6.07 glossy drecos, you could actually produce enough oxygen out of the plastic it produces that you eventually turn into natural gas and polluted water, etc. That uh, you could support one duplicate on 6.07 glossy dracos. Now you'd probably have to run about seven or eight because they won't always be in hydrogen and some other things, but that still means you could actually go to an infinitely sized base if you actually went that route. The reason being 
the glossy Drecos would provide you with eggs for food and they would also provide you with plastic which you could then turn into power and water and oxygen so you could effectively just keep adding more glossy Dreco farms for infinity getting absolutely huge and also it seems really cool that you're running your entire base on uh well you'd have to run them on bam lilies so you could run them on bam lilies which just doesn't cost anything to actually grow them so long as you keep bam lilies in the chlorine atmosphere they grow forever basically no matter what you do with them so you could effectively just run a as many glossy Dreckos as you could fit on the map. But no, no, I'm not doing that because that just leads to madness. The base could get ridiculously out of control. So instead, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and run, uh, well, my current plan is once I start getting to the maxed out level, say about 60 or so dupes, I'm going to start harvesting steam from the rockets. Um, I'll be running an awful lot of dupes and I'll have an awful lot of excess hydrogen. So what I can do with that hydrogen is dump it into a rocketry program and then harvest the steam that comes off the rockets. I have no idea how I'm going to do that just yet. Um, I'm not sure how possible or plausible it is, but I'm pretty sure it's just an engineering problem and we'll figure it out. Oh, and I forgot something actually. Deeper diver's lung. I have a whole bunch of, um, I have a whole bunch of vacillator re neural vacillator recharges I can use to try for diver's lung. One second. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Spin That Vacillator. Up today we have Dig Dug. This is a long time occupant of Outrageous Home. He uh, spent most of his life digging and has been on the Neural Vacillator twice. And in the last time two times he spinned he got Regenerative and Rock Crusher. So that means they only have two choices left. That means they're either going to get, uh, what's that one sunny disposition? Or Deeper Diver's Lung. And Deeper Diver's Lung is the one we're hoping for here today. Let's see what Dig Dug manages to get out. Oop. I think they like it. Okay, let's complete that neural process and see. Oh, sunny disposition. That's not what we were looking for. Damn it, Dig Dug. Damn it. Okay, in that case, we'll have to go over to our alternative studio. This one here is located in a nice balmy conditions and is flooded. Actually, you know what? I think we'll just use this one once. And who are we going to send here again? Well, it's going to be Dig Dug. And you know why we're sending Dig Dug? Because they literally have no choice now but to get, get deeper divers lung. Ah, uh, so welcome to spin that spin that neural vacillator, and Dig Dug here should be 100% guaranteed to get deeper divers lung. The odds of them getting three other choices first, pretty bad. But okay, Dig Dug, can you manage it this time? Can you? I mean, seriously, I'm sure you'll find a way to mess this up. And there we go, deeper divers lung. Nice, nice. Okay, so next up. Next up, my assistant will have this recharge so that we can have another neural vacillator recharge put in there. How many we got left? We've got eight more in the bank. That means eight more spins for our lucky dupes. Now, what dupes are we going to be choosing? Well, I'm thinking all the first first dupes, so all the digs, all the dig dugs. Uh, let's see, dog's body, no, they're confined to base. So brain's dug will be up next, then beastie, no, that would be a waste. So brain's dug will be up first, then art dug. If we have anything left after that, it will become tinker dug. Hmm, so we've got a, a new recharge in the in the tank. Let's spin this out and see who comes up trumps. Today's contestant, Dig D Brains Dog here, has been a long-time occupant of Outrageous Home as well. They've spent most of their life researching. In fact, according to them, they've researched everything that has ever been researched ever by anyone. So let's see if those big brains can allow them to score lucky on their first try. And we have Rock Crusher. Okay, that's, yeah, okay, fine, That that that's good, whatever. And let's go and try and spin that again. And here again, we have Brains Dug, ready to play Spin That Vacillator. Now, they've already failed once to hit the Diver's Lung target. Let's see what they manage this time. And it's Deeper Diver's Lung. Congratulations to our best contestant so far. Now, next up, we're going to hit a recharge and see if that automatically does it. Oh, I was hoping the auto sweeper would actually do that. Hmm, never mind. Okay, we'll skip forward to our next contestant. And our next contestant is Art Doug, longtime resident of Outrageous Home. They claim that they have completed every piece of artwork ever made ever by anyone. Uh, that's quite a claim. Let's see if they can get lucky when it comes to spin that vacillator. Now, we've only got six charges left. Let's see what they've managed to do. Deeper divers lung on a first attempt. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay, so that's three. Thank you very much, Art Doug. You are a legend. Okay, so let's see who we'll be picking up next. We'll be back to you shortly. Next up, we have Tinker Doug, surprisingly also a long-time resident of Outrageous Home. They claim to have been the first dupe to have ever hammered a rock granulator. 
I don't know if that's true, but let's see if they can hammer this one out. We've only got five charges left in this sucker, and let's see what they've managed to get. And that's Jeeper Diver's long number four. Excellent, excellent. Thank you very much for your service, Tinker Doug. Now, next up, we will be looking at... Who was it? Um, Doug's Buddy Out. Doug's Buddy Out, also a long-time resident. Dog's Body Out was the first outside Dog's Body allowed outside the base. In fact, they say they were the first and still the best. Oh, in fact, I don't even care if they get get it first time. We've been having such a good run of things, it doesn't really matter anymore. So, Dog's Body Out, come on down and let's see how you work out in our Spin that vacillator. With only four charges left, Dog's Body Out. A swing and... Dear Lord, okay. Even I'm thinking this is just getting a little bit ridiculous right now. <laughs> you know what? I'm not even. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna cut anymore because if I cut, this just looks ridiculous. Um, okay, we'll recharge that. And next up, we've got a uh, Dig Dug Two. I, I don't want to give it to the Beasties. Anything they get would be a waste. So uh, yeah, Dig Dug Two is going to be our next contestant. <laughs> okay, Dig Dug Two, come on down. And here we have another contestant. Uh, we've got three charges for them. Let's see how they manage to work it out. And, oh, Rock Crusher. Ooh, a spin and a miss. But I'm not going to complain. Things have been so good. I'm, I'm still pretty happy with that. Uh, let's recharge that sucker again. And maybe you can do it. Can you? Nope. <sighs> okay, we'll fast forward until we're set up for our next contestant. Okay, and I believe it was Dig Dug 2. Oh, actually. I want to make sure I've got the right one. Uh, Dig Dug 2, what have you got? Rock Crusher, yes, definitely this one. Okay, Dig Dug, spin that vacillator. And regenerative. Yep, still not going to complain. <laughs> Okay, we've got one recharge left. Let, let, let's see how this works out. Oh, still, this worked out pretty good. How many was that? Four or five? Four or five is pretty good. I think we only had nine, ten, eleven, twelve. About twelve charges on the whole map. Yeah, give me Dig Dug 2. Come on, Dig Dug 2. You can do it. It's our last chance. But honestly, I'm not going to be unhappy one way or the other. And Ding Dug 2 on our final spin on Spin That Vacillator. And we're looking at Sunny Disposition. Okay, that's a little bit disappointing. But honestly, we've had a quite good run of it, so not going to complain too much. Okay, I'm glad you... I hope you enjoyed this edition of Spin That Vacillator. Up next, some more numbers. Yeah, I just uh, added in the deeper lung, deeper diver's lung dupes. I've got five of them now, so that actually decreases my ox oxygen consumption by a bit. And allows me to add on about two and a half more dupes. Actually, a little bit more. 75, 150, yeah, about three dupes. Perfect. I'm, I'm very happy with that. That was a decent run. I mean, with 12 charges, you should get about 50% of them should be divers long. Because there's only four options. Actually, I have to work out the odds. But yeah, about 50%. So five or six should be about average. But yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Anyway, that, uh, I hope that gives you an idea of why I'm doing the stupid things I'm doing, why I'm recycling all my toilet water, why I'm making such a stupidly compressed base that takes up such a small amount of spaces, hopefully, and why I'm putting in some, such a ridiculous amount of beds and tables. It's just all because there is a plan. I kind of want to aim for about 80 dupes, preferably 100 if I can manage it. I want to leave myself room to get up to 100 if I can manage to harness the steam from rockets. So yeah, that's that's why the base is looking that ridiculous. Anyway, I hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed and uh, good luck.